Have you heard of San Luis, Arizona? You know where it is? Well, I'll show it to you right here. So here's Phoenix in the middle of your screen. We'll zoom up, we'll go to the west, over to the Yuma area, and just south of Yuma, Yuma's in the middle of your screen here, right here, right on the border is San Luis, Arizona. It's actually Arizona's biggest border town, but it's about to get a lot bigger if the tallest structure in the country is built there. Look. The city has committed to do everything in its, in its ability to facilitate the completion of this project. And this is what Mayor Gerardo Sanchez is committed to. A concrete tower as tall as two Chicago John Hancock centers stacked on top of each other, or 2,250 feet tall. It would be the tallest structure in North America. This is a model of our solar wind energy tower, which is a uh, large hollow cylinder that we locate in a hot, dry, arid area. Ron Pickett is the CEO of Solar Wind Energy Towers, and if his tower is built, he says it will generate as much electrical power as the Hoover Dam. Here in Phoenix, about a third of your population could be powered by this. Pickett explains how it works. We introduce a mist of water at the top. The hot air absorbs the water because it's very thirsty, becomes dense as soon as it does, starts to sink. As it sinks, it evaporates and it cools. We all know about that. As it cools, it sinks really fast because cold air in this hot environment is chasing to the bottom of this tower. And at the bottom of the tower, we turn the, the wind that we've created into these tunnels and they spin turbines and make electricity 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And here's where they want to build it, on 640 acres of very arid land that used to be a citrus orchard inside the city of San Luis. Because we have the perfect environment, one, dry weather, uh, and it's basically almost year round. So it's the perfect environment and we have the land and we have the resources. San Luis has the an ideal condition in North America for to support the tower. The resources the tower will need includes water, a lot of it. But a federal study found an aquifer under this desert filled with groundwater that the city doesn't come close to tapping out. And according to city planners, the tower will use less water than was allocated to irrigate the land it will be built on. We have the water. The tower would also help San Luis when it comes to employment. Most people there work seasonal agricultural jobs. We're looking close to 65, 67% unemployment. After we start operations, we currently estimate around 500 permanent jobs. 500 permanent jobs, that's a very good uh, uh, resource for our community. And more than 2,000 people will be hired to build it, but who picks up the bill? Estimated construction costs are one and a half billion dollars. Zero cost to the city. There is no cost. Glenn Gimbert is the San Luis City Attorney. He negotiated the deal. It says the tower will be funded by private investors only. We have a conditional financing commitment uh, from an international group uh, to finance the project. This is all going to be private investment. And a very green one at that. Uh, zero. Uh, we can't say actually we're a zero carbon footprint because we might have a gas lawnmower to cut the grass or something, but the, t the tower itself has no carbon emissions. But even the city admits there's a lot that can happen between now and groundbreaking in late 2015. I give it a 65% shot. But what a shot in the arm to this city if it's built. It's going to create a, a big impact, and, and, and I think it's going to be very positive for our community. In San Luis, Arizona, Linda Williams, Fox 10 News. And each one of those towers can power a city of a million people. Think about that. So not to mention all the tourists are going to show up to see this. It's going to be a big thing for San Luis. At almost a half mile high, you'll be able to see that tower from Yuma, which is more than 15 miles away. Police